I'm Paula from Fairy Chic Emporium and today we've got this little project on. Um, it's a bit of an unusual unit. It's got a hinge at the back here and this top lifts up and these are fake drawers so it's, it's cupboarded. And I still think it will come up lovely and it's obviously a very useful, make a great craft drawer and so on. Um, I've found some cardstock and I often use cardstock because they just, you buy these pads and they just do a whole range of colours that all go together so I'm not sure which ones we're going to use yet but I just picked a few out that I thought were quite pretty and um, by using those colours I've picked um, Heavenly Blue and Moody Blue as the two kind of colours that I think will go with it. This had, this was some kind of unusual <laughs> to put it slightly, put it mildly, Japanese style fabric wrapped all over the top and on all of the squares when I got it. So we've had to peel it all off and rub it all down. It had some kind of PVA or something all over it, so it was all flaking. So we've had to give this a lot more attention to detail before we get started than I normally do. So we've thoroughly scraped and peeled it off, sanded it back, and then just to be on the safe side, we've given it a whole a coat of Frenchy finishing coat with a sponge all over and dried it with a hairdryer just to prime it really and try to avoid any bleeding um, going on. So the first thing we're going to do is give it a coat of the Moody Blue um, and then I will come back and show you what we're going to do after that. All right. So as you can see we've done two solid coats of Moody Blue. The coverage is fantastic for this colour. Um, it doesn't need any touch up at all and now what I'm doing is putting a layer of crackle glaze all over it and as you can see I'm being fairly rough about it it's just a smooth even layer um, you can buy there's lots of different brands of crackle glaze um, I buy mine usually at the range or hobby craft something like that I've also ordered it on Amazon before now so they all do the same thing I find this one's pretty good there, that's pretty evenly spread because what I want to do is put some heavenly blue over the top and I wanted this colour to show and the crackle glaze works really well. I don't know if you can see from this cupboard here, this had pebble grey underneath it and white on the top with the crackle glaze. So not only is it aged but you can also see quite a lot of the colour underneath which I really like. So we're going to try and achieve that with this as well. So what I've got to do now is thoroughly dry it. Crackle glaze doesn't work unless it's properly dry. So I'm going to use the hairdryer to speed that up. And then I'll show you putting the heavenly blue on. We only put one coat on the top. So it's, it's pretty fast working. So when we come back to that, I'll show you how we do it. All right. So getting very near to the end of the crackling. As you can see, I am putting on fairly gently a thin coat. I'm not worrying about getting it thickly covered or the bits of the blue showing through. That's kind of the look that I like. It looks a bit messy at this point, but that all comes together once it's dry and we start the sanding. But as you can see, because I'm going to put the thin coat on, it's cracking really quickly. You can already see the cracks coming through. And when we dry it more thoroughly with a hairdryer, more will come through. I am doing a little bit of different directions, but the, the trick is not, if I was to go back over that now, it would pull it all up. So you can't, you've got to work fairly quickly and not go over it too much, otherwise you ruin it. So that's about enough. And we did the whole of that, the whole of the dresser with one pot of um, heavenly blue. So I'm just going to do along here, along the edge as well. But we need to wait for it to dry and then we'll get, get tackle it with a sandpaper and then it will look a lot, lot better. Okay, so we'll come back when we get to that bit. Right, as you can see, we have sanded our uh, cabinet and we've sanded and distressed something I don't do that often quite heavily distressed um, but I quite like the look and I think it goes very well with the um, crackle glaze that we've got and this kind of patchy area but this is what I wanted I wanted to be able to see the colour underneath so I think it looks really pretty um, quite often again we change hardware but we painted this with the two layers and then sanded it back and I actually quite like it as it is I don't think it needs any more it looks quite pretty 
So obviously we, we didn't do these areas because these areas I'm going to put my cardstock on. And I'm going to show you how I do that because quite often in previous projects this square has been inset so it's really obvious to just fill in the shape but this sticks out and what we don't want it to look like is we've stuck a bit of paper on it and it's going to just pull off at any time. So I have chosen this paper which I think is really pretty. So these are my top two and I've cut it slightly bigger than the square. So the square actually measures um, 10 and a half by 9 and a half centimetres and I've done it 11 by 10. Um, so the reason for that will become apparent a bit later on but it's given me a bit of room and so all I'm using is PVA glue. You could probably use finishing coat but I find that the PVA glue gives me a bit of time to move it around plus I think it holds as a stronger glue um, particularly because cardstock's you know not that thin it's quite heavy so I'm going to opt for PVA glue so I'm literally just putting an even coat not too thick because it will bubble up the paper so even dryish coat right to the edge like that and then I'm going to stick my piece on so I'm expecting it to go slightly over the edges, that's fine. Okay, so as you can see I can move it a bit if I need to, if I hadn't put it on like the first time. So just going to press it down and then leave it to dry. And I'm going to carry on and do the other, all the other panels in, in the same way and then we're going to leave it overnight. So it is really, really dry before we go on to the next stage and I'll show you how we finish that off. Okay, so I'll see you tomorrow morning. Yay, morning. So it's looking fabulous. I come in this morning really, really chuffed with it. These panels are properly solid stuck now. So that's, that's the trick is to leave it overnight. I have just completed one just to check that uh, my system works using uh, a mouse sander you can get smaller triangle ones and I think you could probably do it by hand as well it would just take longer so I, I use this for this and what we've done is sanded the edge and do you remember we had a little flap of extra if, if you put some pressure on it it basically tears it along the line hello noodle that's a good point and and then rubbed it down and it's blended beautifully there's nothing to pick off it's all sealed and it feels like it's part of the um, unit mm. <laughs> Oodle's desperate to get in on the action and he's feeling a bit feisty this morning so what I'm going to do is carry on sanding and obviously it's quite noisy um, so we'll turn the um, volume off but you'll be able to see me doing it um, so we'll pop back when I've done all of them. As you can see in some areas it's chipped off a bit more paint but I quite like that and we were going for quite a heavy distressed area thing as a whole anyway so that's okay and I've made sure I think you can probably see that the nice wood frame around the paper I like that frames it in but it's blended it so that it doesn't feel like it's a bit of paper stuck on where there were some little bits and pieces and I wanted to stop with the sand and for fear of sort of damaging any more I've literally used a bit of sandpaper just to rub down the edges and if you wanted to you can rub down the actual bit and distress it more gently but my sandpaper here is 120 grit which is quite coarse so it would take quite a lot off but if you had say a 220 grit you could distress it and make it look even more aged but I think the paper looked quite aged anyway so we're all right I think it looks lovely the last thing we've got to do is seal it all and because it's paper I'm going to use finishing coat not wax 
and I'll just use finishing coat over all of it um, and that will be job done. So I hope you'll have a go with this, it's a really lovely technique on things that are sticking out because you can use the same thing on drawer fronts so if it's actually sticking out not inset that's how you seal it on and make it look like it's part of the wood. So thanks for watching, please follow my page which is www.facebook dot com forward slash the emporium furniture which will take you straight to fairy chic emporium until the next time thank you